Um, and other than that, um, all I really wanted to let you know is the, the approval of all of this needs to take place before um, by our AGM in June. We had our AGM in July. There's, one of the things that happened in the federal legislation is we have to have the annual general meeting within six months of year end. So that's why the Saskatoon conference is in, in June. So we're going to see that a lot more often because that's when we have our AGM. Can't have the AGM in July or it's bad. So, um, but at that AGM, we need to have new bylaws in place. And we're going to follow the same process we had for the Articles of Continuance, if you recall, which was an electronic ballot. And then there's a special meeting, and this time it's going to be held electronically, but also there's going to be a face to face meeting somewhere in the country where 50 people show up just simply to announce the results of the vote. So you will all get the ballot in the mail to cast your vote. Uh, actually probably will come to you electronically I'm not sure so don't quote me on that okay um, but you do have to vote and we have to vote all 7,000 of us we have to have two-thirds approval otherwise it fails so CIP council is doing this nasty little dance of trying to find we want to move in this direction and we also have to propose to people something that two-thirds of them are going to say they're okay with otherwise we're in doo-doo <laughs> okay yes Two-thirds of the seven No, two-thirds of the votes cast. Thank goodness, because if we have 13% of people show up, it's not Mission Impossible. <laughs> Look how we laugh at that, eh? But it's so true. <laughs> um, so there's been some engagement underway across the country. There were some uh, online town hall meetings in September, which were okay for attendance. Um, the CIP president has been traveling across the country. We had a session at the APPI conference. I'm doing this here today. It looks like I'm going to do a similar gathering like this in Calgary on December 4th. So that's the kind of stuff we're doing. There's oodles and oodles of information on the CIP website and there's, stu there's stuff around. So please pay attention to it and encourage your colleagues to pay attention to it because it is important. And then of course when the, when the vote comes, please do vote. And honestly, it's just like in civic politics, right? Like just exercise your right to vote because it's important to do. CIP is collecting all of this feedback and over the next few weeks there's going to be uh, some information that comes out to tell you what they've heard so far. And I've even added my email address up here if you want to send me a message about what you think. Um, we have a few more minutes for some, some basic discussion, but if there's one thing I really want to say is what you like about this proposal, you need to tell the CIP office at that email address or me and I will forward it. You need to tell us what you like about it and you need to tell us what's making you feel uncomfortable and what the solution would be. Just like in civic politics, you know how we always hear from the, the greasy wheel and that's what we watch our politicians pay attention to? We have a responsibility as citizens and professionals to also say what it is we like and what looks good so that we don't lose sight of those good things, because that can happen. Um, I think, you know, key thing I was in Fredericton and National, as you know, and I sat at a table with Manitoba representatives and the Brussels representatives they were going to pull the offices to, 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 to the issues here. And the comment I made to them, I make the game is that um, when you look at you know, 10 years down the road or 20 years down the road, the value of being in an association of associations, me as one of the 7,000, that value has to, I have to see that the same as the value of being in an organization where I have that direct input into the API. So and I think that's one of the you know, big challenges. I go, you know, but if you go to Greg's point, if you look at the economic developers of Canada, and I've been a member of that organization, this, this organization about the same length of time. Um, and both of them, I would have said when I joined, the value was the same, both in being national for planning and national for being in economic development, as it is for provincial ethnic sense. And now, um, I would say that the value of being in, on both organizations and economic development is stronger being in the national than it is in the provincial. So, um, and that just goes to what you know I see getting out of my membership. So, just really, really critical. And I don't know how we do that forward thinking now so that you know, sort of bridge that gap. Um, you mentioned 
for students and there's a poll going on now for U of A with the you know, master's program. We've got some bachelor's students going through here and my old alma mater and a few of us went to Calgary. You know, it's sort of come and gone and come and gone now it's back again. So so we need to ensure that for the students going forward that you know there's value in both. Mm -hmm. A long way way of my saying that you know, like I I fear that association of association. I see why we need to do it, okay? But um, down the road, uh, like when we sort of become, I wouldn't use the word disenfranchised, but uh, sort of separate <laughs> from them, if you will, or we have more communications from the provincial side than the, from the national side. Um, you know, I have a choice of joining one or the other, which I do with the economic developers of Canada and economic developers of Alberta. Um, there's a thousand that are members of one, of one association, but there's only a hundred that are members of the other uh, association. Yeah. So that's my fear. Okay. No, that's good to hear. Thank you, David. Armin? Um, I'd be curious, uh, and I'm sure that we've probably done the research. Uh, you know, we, we basically have a National Professional Planners Association in the United States, we have one in the UK, and we have one in Australia. What is their structure? In, both in terms of do they have uh, state or provincial affiliates and uh, how do they elect their directors? So I can, I can speak most relevantly to APA, the American Planning Association, and AICP, which is the American Institute of Certified Planners. So at first glance, it appears to be quite s similar because APA looks after planning, much like the proposed Canadian Institute of Planning. AICP looks after the certification of planners, much like what now we have as the Professional Standards Board. So in that, they have this very separate and distinct, which for us is similar because CIP does not look after the regulation of the, pro of the profession because the institutes do that, and then they're working together to coordinate all their efforts through the PSB and this Professional Standards Committee. So that's where it looks the same. Where it's radically different is when you get into labor mobility, Labor in the U.S. is a federal jurisdiction. In Canada, it's a provincial jurisdiction. So it totally changes as soon as you move north of the border in that um, AICP can set standards nationally. And this is about standard setting, which is not what this is about at all because it's no longer about this. But AICP can set the standards nationally and then there's chapters, et cetera, and they go and they, and they do their thing. Whereas we are far more bottom up on this because the institutes across the country set the standards and they have to work together. The bonus of all the heavy lifting that Greg did and colleagues across the country is we now have a professional standards board set up, it's up and running, it's cost recovery, and it's doing all of the implementation on behalf of the institutes for people to join the club. So since it's nicely done and clear and discreet, it means that CIP can be other stuff. Does that kind of answer your question? What else do you need to know, Armin? Just a supplementary is uh, with regard to AP, APA, do they also have state affiliates? They, I know they have chapters, okay. right? APA is also, um, <laughs> I always think of Brian Croft on this because I remember sitting on, with Brian Croft on, on APPI Council and one of the things that APA Council has is any special interest you can imagine has a representative on their board, which is not an organization of organizations at all. It's an organization that's, I mean, it may be what CIP turns into later, but not for right now, right? So we're, it's not organized, it's not organized the way we are because the United States is not organized the way we are in terms of a federal government and provincial government. So it's, you can kind of compare, but not quite. And then the Royal Town Planning Institute, they don't have provinces either, right? It seems so, to me that the big uh, distinction is that basically the regulation of, uh, of practice is done at the federal level versus the provincial level on one calendar. In the U.S. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, UK, and I don't know enough to speak to those, but I'm definitely more in tune with the U.S. in here. I'm going to take Bob's question here because I haven't heard from him, and then and then we'll close. And I am totally willing to stay for anyone else that would like to chat some more. Bob? Comment first. I certainly agree with what David's saying. It's a big hurdle to get over to think of kind of being disenfranchised. Yeah. 
Um, the second one is a, is a question about process. How do alternate, is there any room for, in the process, for alternate proposals? How does that happen? Or can it happen? It is happening, right? You know, the fellows have made an alternate proposal. Right. Right? How does that, how, how would something like that get forward? Okay, so here's, here's the deal is in the short term we need bylaws in front of our membership by April to have CIP not be delisted from Industry Canada. CIP Council met on the weekend and considered that proposal. I'm, I'm respectful of the communications machine right now, so I'm, I'm not going to speak to the decisions because there's timing related to those decisions, so I don't mean any disrespect at all. But you can get in touch with John Style, who's your special interest representative at the table, and he'll fill you in. Um, but there are... Was it generality, though? Yeah, no, that's okay. So if there are any other proposals, it's important to send them in to CIP. CIP and they they will be considered you know as much as we can with the time we have I recognize in this whole process that if PFF took seven years who, who are we to think that this will take one right so it's about taking some steps in 2014 and 15 that move us in a certain direction and then it's going to need fine-tuning over time so really big alternate proposals it might be hard I'll, I mean we all know how bureaucracies and machineries work right when you have to get very in, is various interests on side but absolutely for sure if you have any ideas you can give them directly to me and I will send them on to CIP or send them to the CIP office and they go straight to the governance committee that's working on it but we are most definitely while we're in listening mode we put a proposal out to the membership very purposefully because within a year's time we do not have time to have this nice big discussion and arm wrestle things with 7,000 people we felt it was responsible professionally to put out a proposal so that folks could react to it and you can say what you like and you can say what you don't like and alternative proposals can be made and they will be listened to yeah I, I was I was asking that in response really to the national president who spoke at our uh, conference okay said basically if it's not approved in April CFP has gone and I I was first of all offended by that and secondly We'll be there in has trouble. To be an we we will be in trouble because yes. So I have left some post-it notes and pens on the table, and I know that not everyone had an opportunity to speak. Please note on those if there is anything that you really like about what you've heard, or if there's anything that just makes you feel kind of itchy, please write it down and name it. And you don't have to put your name on it, but this was a way for Eleanor and I in particular to listen to what you folks had to say, recognizing in this kind of setting not everybody's even comfortable speaking up, let alone do we have the time in a short zippy little lunch 